We're going to be using Tailwind CSS for styling of our front end. If you're not familiar with Tailwind CSS or if you haven't tried using it, it is definitely controversial. And personally, when I first saw it, I didn't like it at all. But I found that after I've worked with it for a bit, I absolutely would hate to not use it on a new project. It is very addictive and it's a very nice way to work, but it is something that is somewhat controversial. So you might find that this isn't for you and then you shouldn't be using it in future projects, but that is what we're going to be using in this course so now you'll have to bear with me a little bit let's install tailwind by adding it to our front end so we do that by adding some developer dependencies tailwind css post css and auto prefixer post css and auto prefixer are dependencies of tailwind css so you just need to add those at the same time and then tailwind has a little script for initializing it so we'll run that npx tailwind css init dash p the dash p i believe creates the post css configuration file so we run that and we now have a post CSS configuration file and a Tailwind configuration file. Let's open the Tailwind config file. So we want Tailwind to look at all of the files that we create that might have CSS classes in them. So the way it works is that Tailwind will provide a whole bunch of utility classes and you don't want all of those to be included in your CSS bundle. So what it does is that it scans all of your source code for any string that looks like one of these classes and if it finds it, it will include it in the bundle. And it's a confusing error situation to have that you are missing one of these classes because Tailwind didn't discover it in your source code. So it's pretty important that you get all of the source code included here that you might be adding CSS classes to. And we may not be adding anything to index.html, but let's just include it to be absolutely sure that we have everything. So one thing to note here is that Vite uh, puts the index.html in the root folder of the project, not in the source folder. If you're not familiar with Vite, that is something that might trip you up, but just uh, keep in mind that it sits there. And then, we, then we're going to include all of our component files. And all of those are in the source folder. And they're called either, uh, let's just include JavaScript. So JS, JSX, or TS, or TSX files. And the reason why we're including um, JS and TS, as well as the X files, is that we might have some logic in just a plain TypeScript file that that concatenates some string and returns a CSS class from that. I don't know if we're gonna have that, but just in case we do, we don't want Tailwind to miss it. That's why I'm adding JavaScript as well here. We're not actually going to be writing any JavaScript code, I don't think, but just in case we do create a JavaScript file, it's nice that it is automatically included. So now that we have that set up, Tailwind should find it. We will then change the index.css file. So this index.css file refers to all of that that we had on uh, this page here, and we're not gonna be using any of that. So let's just get rid of all of this and just add the Tailwind directives. And there are three of them, and we'll just add those. Those are just, there are some more, I think, but these are what the basic configuration is. Base, components, and utilities. You can see I get little warnings here. That's just because VS Code doesn't know about Tailwind. I'm not actually sure why that is, but it's a warning that you can safely ignore because Post CSS will pick this up. We will then, we can get rid of this style sheet file and the main just renders an app. So that is fine. And that opens index.css. So that is fine. The app file, we can just clear and we will just add, let me just copy this from the article, this very, very simple component. Can also get rid of, let's see, the assets folder. We don't need that. And we also don't need this logo here in the public folder anymore. There, so now what we should have is just a basic div with an H1 that has text for Excel and text Indigo 700. So the text for Excel will set the text size, the font size, and this one will set the color. And you can see I have little hints here. That is from a VS Code plugin called Tailwind CSS IntelliSense, I think. And if you're using VS Code, I highly recommend that you install that. It is tremendously helpful when you're using Tailwind CSS. So let's try and run our server again and see if we get a page that now reflects this. Hello world, that looks indigo to me. Perfect. If you want to keep learning about how to build real world apps with the latest technologies and other career related topics, then start right now by subscribing to our channel and liking this video.